before we get started, I actually want to do a quick show of hands. Uh, I'm sure everyone has used JavaScript at least once. Uh, you used TypeScript? Yeah. yeah, a lot of people, okay. Um, has any one of you heard about Dino before? Have you used it? Okay. That's way more uh, people than I expected. Uh, so let's jump right into the presentation and I'll try to um, interest you in Dino and, and give it a try. Uh, so we'll talk about state of Dino in 2022 and going into 2023. Uh, so shortly about me, uh, I'm Bartek. I'm a software engineer working at the Dino Land company. I started contributing to Dino in September 2018, just a few months after it came out. And I became the first employee of the company that was formed in December 2019. And currently I'm leading the CLI team. So we have a few teams in the company and uh, yeah. So what is Dino for those of you who have not heard of it uh, yet? Dino is a modern JavaScript and TypeScript runtime. So for those folks of you who use TypeScript but don't really like uh, need twiddling with uh, TSC or TSNote or any other tool you might use, uh, Dino might be right up your alley. Um, Dino is supposed to be fun and productive, and I'll, I hope to, to show you that today uh, in, in some short demos. And it allows you to get started with TypeScript in literally seconds. And to prove that, uh, here's a small example. Um, one thing that might be odd to you is that we are actually running a URL uh, and we're actually running a TypeScript file directly. So this is kind of similar to the browsers, right? You can load and execute code directly from a URL, but in the browsers, you cannot really execute TypeScript unless you uh, transpile it first yourself. Um, how Dino came to be? Uh, it was it was introduced in the world by Ryan Dole. Uh, Ryan is actually the original author of Node.js. So um, a few years back, Ryan did a presentation, somewhat famous at this point, that was called 10 Things I Regret About Node.js. Uh, spoiler, it's only seven things actually, but <laughs> give it a watch anyway. Uh, yeah, Ryan introduced Dino in 2018 during this presentation. Uh, then exactly two years after that, we released Dino 1.0. And currently we are sitting at 127.2. So another thing about Dino is that it is secure by default. What does it mean? Uh, well, it means that your application cannot touch your file system. Uh, cannot connect to the internet, cannot read any environmental variables, spawn, spawn sub-processes, uh, load native libraries, whatever you want, uh, unless you actually explicitly tell Dino to do that. And uh, how does it look? Well, if you try to read something from the disk, you will get this interactive prompt that Dino tells you, hey, uh, you're trying to, to read something from disk, but I don't really have a permission to do that. Do you want me to do that or not? And um, there's also uh, a hint here that you can pass dash dash allow read flag to actually disable this prompt. So uh, we'll see this in a second that you can granularly, granularly tell Dino what you want it to do or not. So uh, you can limit reading from file system just to current working directory, for example. And another highlight of Dino is that it's web compatible all the way. Uh, how many of you are front end engineers? So you know browser APIs, right? Wouldn't it be nice if you could just use the same APIs on the server so you get uh, bored with front end and want to move to the back end? It'd be nice if you could just transfer all of this knowledge uh, that you already know without having to learn uh, new APIs. Uh, and this is what Dino enables you to do. Uh, we favor web standard APIs uh, over inventing our own. So, so here's a short list of APIs that you can already use in Dino. Fetch, we had Fetch since version one. Uh, Node just added it recently, and it's not yet there in terms of uh, client it is. We got streams, we got web workers, so if you use uh, Fred, 
your browser, you can do it the exact same way in Dino. Blob, location, text encoder, decoder. We even have prompt confirm and alert. These are like obscure APIs that you probably shouldn't use, but in a quick CLI script, like you don't need to pull uh, inquirer or commander or whatever. You can just use these free APIs from the web and they will work perfectly fine. And another and probably the biggest uh, feature of Dino is that it's a whole tool chain in one binary. So uh, who loves to configure Prettier, ESLint, TS Node, et cetera? Everyone? <laughs> yeah, everyone. OK, you don't have to anymore. We ship with all of these tools. So you want a bundler, you have a bundler. You need to test your code. There is Dino test. And we'll see in a moment how easy it is to run uh, write tests. Uh, we have a task runner, repo. We even have an LSP. So, like, all you need to get productive and run production code with Dino is just Dino itself. It's one single binary that is about 50, 60 megs uh, that, that has all of this tooling that you might need during your work. Um, yeah, I think I will demo some of these. Okay, I will, I will demo them now. <laughs> Um, so let me just go to my Warsaw JS. Can you still hear me? Because I, I won't be able to type and, and hold the microphone. Okay. Uh, so let's let's just see how it how easy it is to, to actually do some TypeScript with, with Dino. I'm gonna type Dino in it, and that's it. You can run TypeScript. So Dino run main.ts done. So no npm install. No configuration, no copy pasting. It's just it. And test, just type Dino you know, test. It picks up a file, it type checks it, and you're done. So if I make uh, something that is not correct, for example, my function add, uh, whoops, I need to enable Dino here. Sure, Dino is enabled. So we have all the IntelliSense. Uh, our add function takes two numbers. If I put a string here and uh, try to, to run the tests again, it will obviously fail with uh, TypeScript will complain that your types are uh, incompatible. And that's it. I did not do anything magical. I didn't copy paste any config. I just typed Dino in it. And you know what? It's it just two files that literally do nothing. So it's just like a quick scaffold for you if you don't uh, want to like create new file manually. Um, okay, maybe let's continue with presentation for now and I'll show you some more things later. Uh, so where are we with Dino at the end of 2022? Well, I think we are in a great place, actually, and we have some exciting new features that were shipped in uh, past quarter that we're still working on and improving them. One of the problems that many people had with Dino up to this point is that Dino was not NPM compatible. So you had all of these dependencies that you use in your day-to-day -day work, and you, you couldn't really use them very easily. You could use them via CDNs like skypack.dev or esm.sh, but it was hit or miss. So some of them worked, some of them didn't. And that's, that was the thing that stopped people from using Dino or adopting Dino more broadly. So we added NPM compatibility. Uh, but if you're not, we're not getting into the same uh, you know, black hole of uh, node modules problem that in every single directory you have uh, the heaviest object in the universe. Uh, we actually solved this pretty cleverly, in, in my opinion and in our team opinion. Um, notice this URL. It says NP import express from npm colon express. That's it. You don't need npm install. You just type Dino run. Dino will pull this package for you once so if you have if you use it in tens of this different projects you will have one copy of it so uh, folks who use pnpm might feel familiar and that's it you can now use npm and npm dependencies and you can use a lot of them there are still some dependencies uh, like really complex one that might not yet work perfectly 
uh, but a lot, of, a lot of stuff just works these days. And by the way, like if you try this, this will actually run faster in Dino than in Node. So you will get more requests per second out of your Express server in Dino than in Node. Uh, which is coming to the next slide is that we have a fast S. Let's keep this fastest for now um, as a question. HTTP server. Uh, so performance was always important in Dino. We used a Rust-based server called Hyper uh, to have a very good HTTP performance and especially to, to have a correct HTTP server. Hyper is used in many um, many huge applications throughout the world. For example, AWS uses Hyper heavily. However, after more benchmarking and more in-depth analysis, we found that, yeah, Hyper is fast, but it's not as fast as it could be. So we... Um, we took a stab at it and tried to improve the, the performance of, of our HTTP server, uh, which uh, is still materializing, but we have uh, very promising results already, and we are working hard on making it the, the fastest in the world, obviously for JavaScript runtimes, right? Like we won't out outperform native Rust server that runs on eight threads and single-threaded JavaScript, but you can still eke out so much performance in, in a single-threaded JavaScript uh, runtime that it's just bonkers. And uh, by the way, 99% of the time, you don't need this performance. But if you do, it is there. Um, so another thing is that Dino has something called standard library, which is... Um, Many people said that it's like a missing piece in, in JavaScript. So Python has a standard library. Ruby has a standard library. Every single language has a standard library, but JavaScript. Uh, Node obviously has some built-in modules. And then uh, you have NPM, which is by far the biggest package manager in terms of number of packages in the world. Uh, but you know, there's a problem. You need to look up these dependencies yourself you probably should audit them before you use them because we have <clears throat> we had many um, not so nice surprises uh, in the past few years that packages were hijacked or uh, maintainers went rogue. So Dino took a different approach. We decided we we were gonna have a standard library, uh, which means it's just a module, a package, uh, a library that has multiple different modules uh, for very common tasks that are uh, audited by us. And we guarantee that they will work with a um, specific Dino version. And uh, yeah, as you can see on the left-hand side, there is this uh, little blue check mark, which might be unfortunate given recent, uh, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so if you're not used Dino standard library uh, at will, it's it's really awesome, and uh, it turns out you don't need to pull 20 different dependencies to do something simple. You can just reach out to, to Dino standard library. Then we have something called Dino land slash x, which is kind of a package manager for Dino or maybe package repository, but it's really just a glorified redirect server. So you can just, I'm sorry, um, connect your GitHub repository uh, to Dino Land X, and then on each Git tag you add, we will pull this uh, code, we will cache it indefinitely, uh, so it's meant to be immutable, and for free you get like automatic documentation ge generation for everything. So like, just use tsdoc or jsdoc, and uh, thanks to our infrastructure in the binary, we can just uh, analyze over all of your code and uh, generate documentation for it. And I'm just going to show it to you really quickly. So uh, let's go to Oak. Oak is uh, one of the HTTP frameworks for Dino. And I'm going to click view the docu documentation. And if we scroll down, we got all of the symbols available in the library available here. And you can actually search for these symbols for uh, from all of the available libraries. So similar to Go, like go.dev or go.pkg 
has this feature where every single Go library is indexed and you can search through them. And it's similar here in Dino, you just press uh, Command K or Control K, I believe, on, on um, other systems and you just type a symbol that you want to search and there you go. Uh, you're searching through all the available libraries. Um, I have no idea how to go back to full screen now. Okay, this should work. I said all of that. Okay, uh, then we have Fresh. Uh, Fresh is the next gen web framework. Everyone loves a new framework uh, every week, right? Um, obviously not, but since Dino has such a different paradigm than Node uh, or other existing solutions, we thought it's best that we have a first class uh, web framework, which actually connects nicely with the next slide I want to show you. Look at this awesome logo and animation. Uh, Fresh is, is a framework that leverages everything good that is in Dino. It has TypeScript out of the box, no configuration, no build step. Uh, it's based on this new, brand new um, and hyped architecture that is called island-based client hydration. So you send no JavaScript to, to, to your user by default. Everything is just rendered on the server. And uh, it works very well with something called Edge. Edge is when you deploy your code close to the user. So we have um, AWS, GCP, uh, Azure. They have data centers all over the world. So there's a good chance that any of your users is like 50 to 100 milliseconds away uh, from, from the closest data center. And you can execute this code there instead of like having a single managed server in, in Europe and another one in, in say, States, uh, which allows you to drastically lower the, the latency and time to first byte. So for example, uh, like e-commerce sites, they are all about latency. Like every 10 millisecond uh, longer wait time means 1% drop in conversion, right? So the money just goes out of the window the longer you wait. So it's it's good to, to be as fast as possible. And to that, we have Dino Deploy, which is our cloud offering. Um, Dino Deploy allows you to... to uh, ship your code using this this edge thing. Uh, so you can, again, deploy TypeScript, Wasm, JavaScript. Uh, it deploys literally in seconds. I will try to actually demo it in a second. And it's pretty awesome. Uh, it's, it's a, again, a new paradigm that is just being uh, popularized by other products like Netlify Edge Functions or Cloudflare Workers. Uh, and obviously Dino deploy. Uh, so yeah, something to, to keep an eye on. Um, okay, maybe a short demo now because my throat starts to hurt uh, because of all this talking. So I'll, I'll show you how you can actually use NPM with Dino. So I'm back at my terminal. Uh, Let's let's try to, to run some simple package like uh, Kause. Maybe maybe that will work. Um, hello, we're so JS. I hope this will work. Okay, I need unstable flag right because we're. You will see next week. It won't be necessary, yeah. <laughs> but uh, for now I'll just add it. Look. I just said run this npm package and like Dino just downloaded all of the dependencies automatically. I didn't do npm install or anything uh, as such. And again, we got this permission prompt. So like this package wants you to, to read your current working directory for whatever reason. Okay, I will allow it. Uh, then it wants to access my environmental variables, sure, and more and more. Like why? 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 Just printing something with a cow ASCII art requires so many, um, so many permissions. But oh well, it does. So, but let's say I trust Kausi. It it won't do anything nefarious to my machine. So I'm just gonna like allow all, all permissions. Yeah, it works. Hello, Warsaw JS. Uh, so <laughs> thank you. So this is like a really simple example, right? But uh, maybe let's try something more. Um, more complex. How am I on time? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, I'll make it quick. Uh, so let's try something more interesting. Uh, 
Has anyone used Vite? Sure. sure. Okay. Uh, create Vite Extra. Vite project sounds good. I'll use Dino View because I love View. And I'll just switch here and then uh, run Dino Task Dev. And I'll go to, to this URL if I can click it or just copy paste it. Boom. Sure enough, you can use Vite and some uh, of your favorite uh, front-end frameworks with, with Dino these days. So uh, like, there's, there's no longer an explanation that, yeah, this is not compatible. So Dino is interesting, but I, I can't use it in my day work. Uh, now you can give it a try. Um, OK, I'm short on time, so I'll just continue with the presentation. So what's coming in 2023? Uh, we'll keep working on our NPM com compatibility to, to ensure that like you can use 80, 90% of the packages available there. Some of them won't be available because they are like very old and use very old node APIs that we cannot really polyfill, uh, but we'll get there. We want to have best DX in class, which we kind of think we already do, like TypeScript, done. Um, you want testing, done. Everything is there for you out of the box. Uh, but there are still improvements to be made there, so we'll do them. Uh, we want to grow the ecosystem, so uh, make it easier for newcomers to discover, uh, to discover how to use Dino. So more tutorials, more uh, learning materials, more first-class dependencies. And finally, we want to have the fastest HTTP server uh, that will be like confirmed with a real in-depth performance analysis, not like one of benchmarks. Uh, oh, by the way, we're hiring. So if you're interested in like low level stuff that is very hard to do and you know JavaScript, TypeScript or Rust, shoot us an email. Uh, and thank you, that's all from me. And I'll be happy to answer some questions now. You can find slides at this URL. Uh, feel free to shoot me a message or um, visit our websites, our blog, where we uh, share release notes and some other interesting reading materials. Thanks for having me <laughs> on the spot. Bravo. Please don't go anywhere. I really sympathize with you <laughs> with the throat thing. So I've had some discussions. By the way, for our audience at home, if you're watching uh, our stream, Please feel free to leave any questions or comments on our Warsaw JS YouTube channel. If you, there is already a question. Okay, here it comes from the Warsaw JS uh, YouTube channel. What's the question? So there is a question from Bob Simple. My question is a bit too specific. Is there a lib compatibility planned? Lib UV, sorry, lib UV. Uh, try to run play playwright in dino but no luck there uh, yeah libuv is like the the event loop that node uses so browser has an event loop node has an event loop dino has an event loop uh we're written in rust not c and c plus plus so libuv is essentially uh, incompatible with dino there are some strides made to to actually do that but I wouldn't bet on it. I'm sure we can find another solution to actually make uh, playwright. Was it playwright? Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, I'm sure we can make play, playwright work. I'm pretty sure it uses Node API, with, which actually is now supported in Dino. So uh, yeah, just open an issue with us, and we'll see what we can do. Uh, before, thank you very much, Bob says. Uh, you heard, he said, you, uh, you heard it. Uh, before I go to you guys, I heard one thing. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. Was this automatic documentation? No, F automatic documentation generation. Yeah. Wait, free automatic documentation? <laughs> Was the free part also involved? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, for, <laughs> I'm just. Mm -hmm. And you can just put a URL to a CS module or TypeScript module, and it will generate a documentation for you. So, like, I'm, I'm lazy, so I'm just going to click one of these links. Not that it will work for sure. Because, from what I understand, my conversations with some of you guys. There's a complaint constantly about not enough time for documentation. There, there wasn't time for that. I was too stressed. It was asynchronous. Everything was happening at once. So it sounds like a good uh, thing to me. Here you are. 
Yeah, I have one simple question. So what is the biggest advantage of switching to Dino over NPM in your opinion? Switching. Oh. Um, uh, over yeah. Yeah, over no. Uh, well, it really depends on, on your use case. So like the obvious answer, it, it depends, right? Uh, if you if you have a project that is working perfectly fine, that is probably like a commercial project, there's most likely little to no in incentive, uh, especially economically, to do that because rewrites are risky, they are costly, and they usually are not better than what you already have. Uh, but if you're starting greenfield, um, I'd say that two or three days that you will save on configuring your whole tool chain on your project might be worth from the get-go. And then it will only get better because like we have end-to-end -end experience. So uh, it's not yet like you need to stitch the tools yourself. These tools are provided to you out of the box by Dino and they work very, very well with each other. So like you don't need to set up Prettier, you just run Dino FMT your code is formatted and like your CI, CI pipeline, you can literally just copy paste it from, from our documentation and have a GitHub pipeline that runs in uh, five seconds set up in under two minutes. So um, yeah, again, if you're starting a greenfield project, I think it's worth it just for the sake of how e easy it is to get going. Unless you, of course, love your tools and have like bespoken template that you just use for every single project you start. Maybe it's not for you, uh, but yeah, it's it's a breath of fresh air in terms of uh, developer experience compared to, to what you get these days. Always good to have more choices. That's what I say. One more question. Hey, uh, thank you for the presentation. I tried to use Dean a few years ago just for fun to try it. And one thing that I really didn't uh, like is that on the first look, when you use this URL imports, yeah, it's look great, easy, and etc. yeah. But when you think about the really big project, hundreds of files, for example, and etc. each of them have, have an e import. And for example, you want to update the package with new version, how you can do that. It's very similar to package JSON and its dependencies field. But the advantage is that it works on the web too. So you can use burst specifiers in your websites if you provide a package uh, import map. And you can do the same in Dino. So you can have like a single JSON file where you specify all of your versions and then use burst specifiers instead of full URLs. And the great thing about this is like, you write this in Dino once, so you can write it on the server, but then you can easily transfer this code to the browser because it uses the web standard solution. So you essentially will just have to like switch URLs to a CDN instead of local file paths, and it works. However, with package.json, package.json doesn't really work in the browsers, right? So you have to generate something else, which will probably an import map anyway. Thank you, thank you very much. Great presentation.